Hi guys, this is Itai from the Deep Learning course. Today I'll be giving you a short tutorial on how to create a virtual machine with the GPU on Google Cloud Platform. This is something I know some of you have been having some difficulties with, so I hope this helps. Also, I'll be showing you how you can connect to the virtual machine that you create using VS Code so that you could work on an IDE. So to get started, just navigate to this Google Cloud Platform page. You will see here the drop down menu for your projects and you probably want to create a new project. You can give it any name you want. I'll just name it uh, tutorial and you don't need to uh, give any organization. Just click create. So now uh, this thing will spin until the project is created. And when it's finished, just click the tab. And this will bring you to the project uh, dashboard. So there are many, many things going on here. The main thing you want to notice is the billing tab. Okay, as uh, the more resources you use, the more the estimated charge will go up. Um, for this project, you have three hundred dollars and uh, an extra fifty that you can get uh, for free. So that that's actually more than enough for the project. But just keep in mind on this uh, billing tab, so you won't get charged extra. And what you want to do after this is, I mean, Google Cloud Platform is used for many, many different things, but we actually want it to use it as a compute engine, right? As a remote kind of computing machine. So just click Compute Engine and enable the Compute Engine API. Click this, and this might take uh, a minute or two. Okay, so just uh, let it do its thing, be patient. Okay, so once that's done, you should see um, this dashboard for all your uh, VM instances. If for any reason uh, you don't see this dashboard, you can always uh, go back to it. Um, just go to the main page, make sure the right project is selected, and press Compute Engine, and this will bring you here. So as you create more and more instances, well, basically you probably only need one, for the project, uh, but they will all be shown here. So uh, we'll just create a new one and give it some interesting name, uh, GPU machine, for instance. Uh, the region you want to select the one closest to you, ideally. So uh, for us, it's uh, in Tel Aviv, which is nice. But um, keep in mind that uh, GPUs might not be available in that region or any other region at any time. So um, the thing, I mean, you create a new instance and if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, you create a, you create with the same configuration on another region. I'll show you in a second. So after you select the region, you want to select the CPU and hard disk memory setup that you want. I'll just go with the default one. If you use something that's more, uh, for instance, it has more uh, cores or more um, disk space on the GPU, it will cost more, okay, not by much, but uh, just go with the minimal you will you think you need. And for GPUs, I recommend the NVIDIA T4. It's what you have on uh, Google Colab, so you're familiar with the capabilities, and uh, that's more than enough for the project. So after you selected the GPU and um, the CPU and hard disk space, just uh, click Create. Okay, now. Keep in mind, again, as I said, that, um, that the availability of GPUs is kind of limited. So a GPU may not be available in the region I have selected. And uh, so it might work, it might not work. Uh, if it doesn't work, you just um, discard this instance and try to create one with the same specs, but on a different region until you find the region that, um, that has a GPU ready for use. Okay, this may take you like uh, a few minutes. So let's see. I'm guessing this one won't work. Tel Aviv is kind of uh, crowded, I guess. So yeah, you can see here, if I go to the notifications, it says that uh, this type of instance is unavailable. 
in uh, the Middle East West 1C zone. Okay, so we'll just uh, discard it, this trash can, and create another one. Same specs, but uh, maybe somewhere else, maybe in the US, I don't know. Uh, preferably some something close to, closer to us, but um, but yeah, most important thing is that it has a GPU available. In any case, I have another project where I already have one running, so I'll just do that. So yeah, this is the instance I have. It has a GPU on it, and uh, if you make one yourself and find the region with the GPU, this is what you will see. Okay. So to connect to it, you can just press SSH, and that will open an SSH connection on this uh, small console tab. And uh, I'll show you in a second what that looks like. Just click Authorize. So yeah, now uh, this is my GPU machine. Okay, I can make uh, folders on it. I can make new files. Um, download Anaconda. Download. The NVIDIA drivers and start working, but um, we're used to writing code in an IDE. I think uh, that's how you've been writing code uh, throughout your uh, degree so far, so that's what we want to do. And for that, we need to connect to this virtual machine through some IDE. So you're probably using either PyCharm or VS Code. I prefer VS Code, that's what I use, so I'll show you how to do that there. The process for PyCharm uh, may be similar, I'm not really familiar with it. But uh, I'm sure it's, it won't be too hard to figure out. So the first thing I need to do is to open up uh, Visual Studio Code. And here, under the Extensions tab, I want to make sure that I have Remote SSH installed. Okay, if you don't see it, just uh, press Remote SSH. And instead of Uninstall, you will see the Install button. Press it, and it should install. Once you've done that, click F1 and write remote SSH connect to host. And here you will see all kinds of virtual machines that I've been using and connecting with uh, through VS Code. Uh, and we just want to set up another one, another connection. But instead of adding a new SSH host, I want you to press configure SSH host. And here you can choose the config file. Okay, you have a file on your computer that uh, sets up all of these remote connections. If you don't have one, you can just create a blank file and connect with it uh, through settings. Just uh, you specify a custom configuration file here, it will create it. I already have one on my computer, so I'll just use that one. And this is what it looks like. So here you can see all of the different remote connections I have, and I want to make a new one. So I'll just write here, uh, host, and uh, give it a new, give it an alias, any name I want. So I'll just write um, GCP remote machine. Okay. Under host name, I'll navigate back here and copy the external IP like this. For user, I'll just write my own name. You can again choose whatever you want. And now we want to set up kind of a lock and key. I want to lock the remote instance and have uh, a key on my local computer so that I could connect to this virtual machine and no one else could and without using a password. So to do that, we want to generate a key on our computer and kind of link it. So just open up the command prompt like this. Okay. And um, make some folder to contain your public and private keys. So I'm just uh, making a folder called maybe key pairs. Okay, now go to this folder. And here you want to write the, the command SSH keygen minus the RSA. This is the inscript, encryption uh, protocol. And minus F, that's the file name, so I'll just write a GCP um, remote key. Um, this, you do minus capital C, that's your username, so minus itaisela, which you can write whatever you need. And minus B, this is the amount of bits the key will take. I'll use 2048. 
So press enter. Uh, for passphrase, you can enter a passphrase. I don't want to use one, so I just press enter again and again. And now my key has been uh, created. Okay, I can actually see it if I navigate to that uh, folder. So let me just go here and key pairs. Now I have a remote. Uh, I have two keys. One is private and the other is public. So first I want, uh, whenever I connect to that virtual machine, I want locally, I want VS Code to take the private key from here. So I just copy the path of this private key. I go to VS Code and I add identity file and I route this path. Okay, you don't need the uh, quotation marks. Okay, so now locally, whenever I connect to the remote machine, my local computer knows where to take the private key, but I want to give the public key to, uh, be to the remote instance, right? So to do that, I go back here and I enter this instance by clicking on it. And when I do that, you will see this edit button right here. Click that. And what you actually want to edit is these SSH keys right here. You see, you can see I have uh, a few already set up. You can set up as many as you want. So we'll just add one more. And to fill this in, what you want to do is to go to the public key, open it with some kind of uh, text editor, and copy the whole thing. and paste it here. Okay, when you do that, just press enter. And you'll see that it's actually saving our edit. Hopefully this will work in a second. Yeah, nice. Okay, so now we've set up the private key locally, we set up the public key. Now all you need to do is go to VS Code and you can press this uh, thing right here or press F1 connect to host and okay now and now if you've saved the config file you should see here GCP remote machine I'll just make sure I save it and that it's accurate and you press that this will open another window um, the GCP machines usually use Linux unless you specify something else so just choose Linux It takes a few seconds to set up. And yeah, so now you can see here that we're connected to this machine. So you can do like create a new terminal. And now you have a Linux terminal on this um, on this machine. You can uh, like make folders here or um, you can see the, the folders you've created here. I made some Python file uh, before. Um, you can navigate here and you can also like open it as a folder just um, here open folder and uh, this is my uh, this is the folder I'm using currently so I'll just open that might might need to click Linux again trust the authors and now you can actually see all of these files here and you can copy files from your computer just drag them here or uh, download I can download this locally, so that's very kind of uh, that's a very comfortable way of transferring files from your local machine to the remote machine. And um, yeah, you, you can also have this terminal if you want to kind of uh, install things like Anaconda and stuff. So now you can really interact with the machine and use it as you would a local machine. The next steps, which I won't go into now, is to download Anaconda and download the NVIDIA drivers for the C for the GPU that you are uh, using, and, and uh, the NVIDIA drivers and CUDA. Okay, that's a whole thing in itself. Um, there are lots of resources online that will tell you exactly how to do this. I don't feel like I need to make a tutorial on this, but um, if you're having many problems with this, then I'll also explain that in another video. So that's it. Um, hope this helps you. And if not, please uh, let me know. Okay. Bye. Good luck.